I'm Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and welcome to The Sidebar, a weekly show on the community, arts, culture, and more. This week brought to you by our sponsor, Tresvent Manor. And today we're talking to Nikisha Cole, arts and culture liaison for Shelby County Government. So stay with us for a conversation with Nikisha. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So your position as we're riding up, and we, as always these days, we're in the central atrium in uh, Crosstown on the 10th floor, so people might hear some noise, some dogs barking, various... <laughs> you know, things going on, which is all fine. As we were writing up the elevator, I said, well, congratulations on the new job. And you looked at me and you go, well, it's been a year and a half. <laughs> Time has no meaning for me, yeah. apparently. But um, it is a first of its kind role. Correct. But let's just start broadly. You know, if you are stuck in an elevator with someone, um, how do you describe what you do? Oh, wow. So um, I would say that my job is to inform and advocate for the arts in Shelby County. I would say that's the main thing. And also to support all of those art, wonderful arts and culture organizations in our vibrant sector here in our county. Yeah, yeah. And so, and is that through, I guess it could be in many ways, but is it, I guess people think, well, are you funding organizations? Are you funding individual artists? Are you bringing people together? Or are you working with nonprofits? What, and maybe all of the above. So it's a collective, correct? So most of our work has been in, with nonprofits in the arts and culture sector, but we are here to uplift the entire sector. So a lot of that has been through a project, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, called 901 Art for All. Yeah. Um, and there's been a collective of different events that we've done called Neighborhood Art Parties. We had our first two last year with Arc Wings, which I'm not sure if a lot of people are familiar with. With. It's in Frazier. And then, of course, we've done some work with Stacks, um, Soulsville Stacks Museum of American Soul Music uh, last year. So we're hoping to launch some more of those events. And that is to bring arts and cultural awareness to neighborhoods. And then, of course, we will be having our second Art for All Festival at the Brooks Museum on May 11th. On May 11th. Okay. We'll yes. repeat that a couple times. May 11th, people can go. Yes, it's a free festival. We're okay. going to have more than 40 arts and culture organizations represented. Okay. We'll have about 15 different performances from various groups. And it'll be at the Memphis Brooks Museum of Art. It is a free festival. And um, our friends at the Brooks have been fortunate enough to let all of our folks who come to this event to also view exhibits for free. Oh, okay. Including the Christian Soriano event that just recently yeah. opened. Or Which exhibit. I heard is amazing. Yes. Um, we were going to go and then <laughs> it was so crowded we didn't go. That was, tell me the date again. Just it's so. May 11th, Saturday, May 11th from 11 to 3 at the Memphis Brooks Museum of okay, Art. Okay, cool. Um, and um, the... It's a new role, again, yes. a year and a half old. What, what what did that come out of, a recognition of so, what need? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great point. So to, to, to that end, Shelby County was the only county of its size with a community of our size that did not have an arts and culture representative in government. So the nonprofit committee, which is composed of multiple nonprofits from across the sector, specifically in, in arts and culture, found and realized that there was not a representation for them in government. So they advocated yeah. for the position within government and they created it. And here I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, it, it's under community services. Yes. Is that what I read? Too? Yes, that's, it is. So ultimately Dorcas Young. Yes. Is it? Yeah. It's a friend of well, the show. Well, you know, Dorcas is now oh, that's right. deputy. Right. Uh, Definitely. Um, is she deputy CAO? CAO. Deputy yes. CAO. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. We've yes. had her on um, uh, behind the headlines over on WKNO at least once, if not twice, and always a fan yes, of yes, yes, having yes. her on. Um, so the, working with the various nonprofits, um, again, is it does it come down to funding or is it coming down to collaboration so and just facilitation? So it's more or less collaboration. We have provided support for our organizations it's through the Neighborhood Art art party events that we've had. But as far as we, we go, we're hoping to have this event where there is more collaboration and engagement with all the arts organizations and also bring in organizations to communities that otherwise may not be exposed to them. Yeah. For example, with our art, um, in, um, art neighborhood art party event, getting tongue-tied. Yeah, that's um, right. I do it all the time, so you're in good company. <laughs> neighborhood art party event that we had in Frazier, you may have, we had the Dixon and Opera Memphis and groups yeah. represented at this at this particular event, and you you have residents in Frazier that may not have had been exposed to or have had right. opportunity to see the services or, the op or these uh, art forms that are provided by these groups. So that's the whole, the whole goal of the, of the project yeah. is to bring the arts to communities and then in turn, the art organizations are providing awareness and growing awareness of what they do. Yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, Shell on Wheels. Yeah, you know, you know yep. the Shell, yep. like to take, it, the Shell is this amazing thing. You know, obviously it had right. a bunch of hiccups during COVID, but then they wanted 
to bring the shell to people who right. can't make it to the shell. And right. So you got to have the shell on wheels, right? Right. So it's and that kind of concept. Exactly. It's that kind of concept. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to partner with Natalie. They've been booked up yeah. since, since they've started. Yeah, that's a good problem to so have. So exciting. Yeah. yeah. Talk about some of the other arts organizations that you've been working with. So there's uh, on our I have this list. I know. I, on I, our I committee, have the we, probably <laughs> have, we, have, we have a multitude of organizations. I mean, everybody from the Orpheum to small grassroots organizations. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just a multitude of organizations that have worked with and collaborated with us on these projects. So recently, um, we uh, worked with MATA to create an arts and culture access map that was released in December. And this map has more than 100 arts and culture organizations identified near bus routes in Shelby County. Um, we had to have the collective of working with our, with our nonprofit organization to make that happen. Special thanks to the folks at MATA for working with us directly to make that happen. When we rolled out the map, we actually had art activations within the William Hudson Terminal over the holidays. So for three three Thursdays in, in the month of December, we had art activations from all types of groups, whether it was the Memphis Symphony, Opera Memphis, um, uh, Young Actors Guild, who's an amazing group, a young group that, that they work out of um, Bethel Grove and Orange Mound area wow. over at their Harriet Performing Arts Center. Um, just a multitude of great groups that came out to promote and celebrate the creation of this map that we now have available at libraries and in community centers. So, okay. so people can see what arts organizations are within their community and also see how they can ac easily access them with MANA. Yeah. Is there, does MANA have it on, on its website or do you know? So, it can, it so we have it on our website oh, and okay. there should be a link to it on their website. What's your so our website? website is 901artforall.com. So if you want to go to 901artforall.com, you will see a link to the arts and culture map. You will see free programs that are available for arts organizations with arts organizations throughout the county. You will also see um, information, educational resources for educators and or people that are looking for things to educate students and or the public on arts offerings in our community. Um, it all sounds so obvious that it's like, well, why didn't, why wasn't this exist forever? You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean that in the best way. I don't mean in a dismissive way. So, but you're the first ever. So it, is it been, I mean, did you come in with this idea of this exactly what we want to do or has it been kind of a work in progress? Well, it's been a work in progress because we really rely on our nonprofit arts and culture organizations to kind of tell us what they see, what they're learning. And then we in turn try to figure out how we can implement those things. So arts access and transportation was something that had come out of, come out of the committee and there were some discussions. And from there we grew and said, okay, let's see if we can cultivate a relationship with MATA. And then from there we were able to create this map and then I had a recent conversation um, with Urban Art Commission. Maybe we'll be able to integrate public art into this at yeah. some point. So like, it's just been a process. It's not just me, but it's the collective of these organizations coming to the table with ideas or suggestions to uplift arts and culture in our community. And then we figure out ways to implement them. We had, again, we're, uh, just for those who may be joining late, we're talking to Nakisha Cole, who's the arts and culture liaison for Shelby County government. And again, as she just said, you go to 901 Art for All or Arts for All? Art for All. 901 Art for all.com and learn more about what's going on. They've got a big event coming up May 11th at the Brooks, uh, 11 to three an art festival. Uh, yes. Art sort of, for all yeah. festivals, what it's called. Um, but you mentioned urban arts and we just had the new head of urban arts on recent, if it's urban art or urban arts, I never get it right. It doesn't <laughs> matter, but they do a lot of the public art. Absolutely. And, and that's one of those things and I dwell on it way too much, but I find it to be amazing in Memphis, this kind of explosion over the last 15 years of, of cool murals and yep. art in various, you know, little plazas and squares or, you know, all over, you know, yep. the, the rebirth of Overton Square. And it's cool, this idea that, I mean, that's all visual arts, mm -hmm. paintings, murals, sculpture. Right. But, and then you get music in various places, but all the arts could be in different places. Absolutely. I remember art, uh, uh, Opera Memphis. Yep. Um, they do the, whatever. The, the 30 the, days of opera. Yeah. And they yep. go around town and all they bring the opera to places because again, it's not everybody can be there at eight o'clock on a Tuesday night right. for the performance. Right? right. There's nothing wrong with that, but right. it's gotta be a bit of all. You gotta take the art to the people and take the art to the communities. Yeah. That's what we've been trying to do with, again, the neighborhood art parties and then just having, ha being able to expose all these organizations to different things. One thing that stood out to me when we had the 
holiday art activations at the Matta Terminal, there were people that were just in awe of the fact that these things were happening within their their terminal. There were, you know, string quartets from the symphony playing, uh, Stax Museum Academy kids singing. Yeah. And it just it just brought a whole different feel to the folks that were that were just, you know, doing their regular day to day travel, whether it's from work, home, what have you. Yeah. Um, it just brought a whole feel to uh, to the to the to the terminal that probably otherwise wouldn't have not been there. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, again, talking to Nikisha Cole from who's the Arts and Culture Liaison for Shelby County Government. We're going to talk more with Nikisha here in a minute. How she got into this, all kinds of things, other organizations they're working with. But let me take a moment to do some housekeeping. Uh, I am Eric Barnes, and this is the Sidebar, which airs on WYXR ninety one point seven every Thursday at eleven thirty, focused on the community, arts, culture, everything in between. Uh, it's not just a radio show, though. It's also one of many weekly podcasts we do at the Daily Memphian, including uh, sound bites, the food podcasts that we do that Chris Harrington and Holly Whitfield do, and which also airs here on WYXR every Thursday at eleven, right before the sidebar. We also have a Memphis Tigers podcast. We have a Memphis Grizzlies podcast. Every once in a while, we have a politics podcast. It's not really a political season. But Bill Drees and Sam Hardiman use on the record. Um, we did a lot of that during the city elections last year, and probably will later in this year. All of our podcasts are on the Daily Memphian site, as well as iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, you can also get this show and Sound Bites, the food podcast, on wyxr.org or download the WYXR app. Um, it includes not just our shows, but all the talk shows and mostly music shows that WYXR does every day, every week, every month. Um, do consider becoming a supporter of WYXR. It's nonprofit listener supported radio. You can become a member, you can do a one off donation, you can learn more about all that at WYXR.org or on the WYXR app. And if you're not a paid subscriber to the Daily Memphian, to consider becoming one. Uh, we are also nonprofit, um, reader supported, subscriber supported um, news in Memphis, in the greater Memphis area, uh, the largest newsroom in the region. And so please, we just had our fifth anniversary in the fall. So consider becoming a subscriber, a paid subscriber, if you haven't already. Coming up in the next few weeks on um, uh, the sidebar, Philip Ashley. Um, you know him from his chocolates. So we're going to talk to him. I've actually never, don't think I've ever met Met him. I certainly, I know I haven't interviewed him. And we also have Lauren Kennedy. One more time, we're trying to have Lauren Kennedy on. We've said it. It's going to happen. We can't, ex we're, she was formerly at Urban Arts, Urban Arts Commission, and now has her, uh, her own gallery. So we're looking forward to getting her on. And recently we had uh, Josh Burgess from uh, Lucy J's Bakery, which also has this amazing mission to help families and uh, people who've experienced homelessness. And it's just, it, and they have great food here in Crosstown, but also really great guy and a great mission. So you can go back and listen to that. We, and we had recently Matisse Moore, who is the relatively new head of Boys and Girls Club of Memphis. Uh, great conversation about all the work they're doing and their attempts to expand the reach and impact of what they do. I think I mentioned behind the headlines uh, where we would had Dorcas Young on some, I don't know when, a couple times. Uh, we have coming up this week and behind the headlines is on WKNO.TV uh, and WKNO.org um, every Friday at seven o'clock. Um, this week, we've got Bill Hargrave, the new president of the University of Memphis. And we recently had on a group of business leaders talking about economic impact, talking about dealing with crime. And in another show, I think last week, we had members of the police union on talking about just police officers in this time when people are so focused on crime and public safety and all the kinds of issues that are going on there. Uh, it was a really great conversation with the two of them. Again, that was on Behind the Headlines. But we are here with Nikisha Cole, uh, the arts and cultural liaison for Shelby County government. How did you end up in this work? What brought you here? Well, I think, well, I will say this. I've always had a strong appreciation for the arts. And I think I can credit that to my parents and, you know, education and teachers and what have you. And um, I just, I won't say I fell into it. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that. You can say um, that. It, it, I can say <laughs> that. It, I, think, I can say that it just was a culmination of my experience. I've worked in government. Um, I've worked in um, for the city of Memphis in the planning office. I've worked for the Chamber of Commerce. And of course, you know, in those roles, you're advocating for your community. Yeah. And the arts in, in culture are so so vibrant and such a, a major part of our community. It's one of our major exports from our community, if you really yeah. think about it. I yeah. mean, it really is. 
And it just, to me, seemed like a natural, seamless fit for my appreciation for the arts. And then, of course, just my background and in, in culminating into this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you talked about your love for art. And I say this as a person who has literally, I mean, I love music. I love pain, painting, arts, visual. I have zero talent in any of yeah. those areas. <laughs> so, but, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean I don't love talking to people who are involved yeah. with it. Do you, yeah. are, you, are you in that similar boat to me? Or do you actually have, you know, you're more, t I, I don't well, mean to well, pigeonhole you that. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny, and and I and I laughed about this. I actually was at the Brooks. Um, we were doing a site visit, preparing for the Art for All Festival, and they had the Scholastic Art exhibits down there. Now I was a school a Scholastic Arts exhibit kid in the seventh okay. grade. Got yeah. a gold key. But I mean, that's where it <laughs> But, the, but the, the, the appreciation was obviously yeah. still there, you yeah. know, um, going to various museums in this country and abroad, yeah. um, being able to experience Alvin Ailey Dance Company at a young age in second grade, even. I think that's my first dance performance my mother took me to. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, just having a very, yeah. very strong appreciation. Seeing uh, Rodan at the Dixon as a fourth grader and my teacher, even Miss Stringer at the time saying, you have a high aptitude for art. You've been very <laughs> engaged with this whole thing. Yeah. And it's funny, as I got into this role, it just seems like a natural progression um, yeah. to those, that appreciation. And then, you know, funny thing, I have a degree in print journalism. Oh, so, yeah. So it's just how's that working out? <laughs> look, look, it's been look, it's been helpful though. It's been helpful yeah, working yeah, in nonprofits, a, working yes. with government. It's been helpful, but yeah, yeah but I just think that it, it just all is a culmination of all of my experiences to yeah. this point. Yeah, no, that all makes sense. It's funny. Um, I interviewed a couple of musicians, and uh, it was Serena Wages who's been on the show before, and her guitar player on her new album, Joe Restivo and Matt Ross Spang, the producer and the Grammy award winning producer, multiple Grammy award winning producers. I did a thing here in the, in Crosstown at the listening lab and you talk about love and I love music and I, I, but I can't play a note. And I'm, I'm asked Joe Restivo some question and he goes, well, you know, it's pretty basic. I mean, you're just playing these chords. I'm like, yeah, says someone who can play music, you know I mean? I can appreciate all that, but yeah. you know, anyway, yeah. it's, it's, it's more obvious to some. Um, do, your parents must have had a love for art oh, yeah. to, for you to have been yeah, absolutely. Um, to your end, my father majored in music. Yeah. So like we yeah. grew up with all different genres of music. I mean, big band, classical, um, you know, soul, R&B, whatever, yeah. you know, everything, jazz. Yeah. yeah. So just grew up with that. And then same thing with my mom. I just had a strong appreciation for the arts and they had friends that were artists and all yeah. of that. So it just kind of was a natural, natural progression. Right. It, you talked about, well, I will talk about like having, I have zero artistic talent. My mom could paint. It was a really lovely painter. And, um, and so she had art books around. Now that I think about it, it's kind of similar yeah. thing. At a very young yeah. age, there was like these art books and yeah. museum books and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But I remember, I mean, I couldn't draw, I couldn't paint, I couldn't do anything like that. <laughs> and then I had kids, and when my son was born, this is a long time ago now, but when he was got to be, let's say, three, whenever they start, I should go to Natalie for this, whenever they start really drawing, it was probably three years old, and so we'd sit around his table and draw. So I hadn't drawn anything in 20 years, mm -hmm. right? Or I mean, mm -hmm. 50, how, mm -hmm. since I was a kid. And literally, my ability to draw was frozen at eight <laughs> years old. And here I was, I was like 32 years old, trying to draw, like, and trying to kind of like, let me do something, really draw something. I'm like, I still draw like an eight year old. And if I drew something right now, it would be the drawing of an eight year old. So it's pretty sad, really. Just, that's just, we'll just leave it on that. Um, so let's talk about some of the other groups you're you're working with or want to work with. Okay. I mean, and and if there's people listening who are part of one of these arts groups in town, I guess they should get in touch with you and see if there's Absolutely. some way to collaborate. They can get in contact with me. We would love to have them as members of the Art and Culture Nonprofit Committee with Shelby County. We're about to start our next phase of work. Um, we try to do these short projects that are within a year to a year and a half that are going to emphasize whether it's art access, arts awareness. They normally fall in those categories. So we're about to start that work. It may be some expansion on some current work. So I brought up MATA. I brought up some of the um, arts access pieces. So there may be some expansion of that work. Um, and another group that I will mention that I'm active with is the Memphis Cultural Coalition, okay. which is really, really dynamic. It's led by Nasa, Nasa Troutman, who is the executive director of Historic Claiborne Temple and the founder of The Big We LLC. So that's a great organization, great group of folks. It's a collective of arts organizations. They're moving very, very close to the advocacy component of everything. I don't know if you were aware, but they had their first um, mayoral yeah. Council. So that came as a debate. I'm debate. sorry to cut you it's, off there. Yes. That, yeah, the, I do remember that. The idea is spurred from the 
Right. The, the Memphis Cultural Coalition and them wanting to make sure that, that the arts, the, the voice of the art sector was heard. Yeah. So yeah. that was very cool. So oh, hack, actively work with that group. A lot of a, a lot of the members of that group were also part of the nonprofit committee, the arts and culture nonprofit committee. So there's a lot of collaboration, a lot yeah. of work going on between both groups. I remember during that whole campaign season, we did two debates. And, and lots of coverage and all kinds of interviews that that, that we did and um, yeah some and Paul Young who ultimately won saying oh no yeah it was at the you know cultural coalition debate last night or whatever which then paid off because when he won at his inauguration he came out to three six mafia and that was like <laughs> he really owned the whole cultural I think it all comes yeah. back to you and the yeah. work you all are doing yep and that's and that and I will say that I would think that the work taking place with the arts and culture nonprofit committee with Shelby County I think that even spurred that conversation even happen when the city elections happened. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it hadn't been something that people paid attention to before. And now with these um, alliances and collaborations of groups, now they're like, oh, yeah. this is something we need to pay attention to, yeah. which is ironic because, again, arts and culture is one of our largest exports. Yeah. M- music falls into that, right? We have two of the largest dance companies housed here in our city, right? Yeah. Ballet Memphis and Collage, top 50. Yeah. Those two companies. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So that's just something that's interesting that um, that we had not had that type of representation um, prior to that in our government here. And you look at a lot of dynamic, progressive moving cities. It's been in place for a long time. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we're and we're we're fortunately at a place where we have already that unique culture and arts and culture export that we have that we can do that. Yeah. We can just kind of build off of that momentum in a place that maybe some other places can't. Yeah, it's when you tell people you're from Memphis, and if I've traveled <laughs> last year, was able to go to Europe yep. twice, and when you you know people ask where you're from, you say they're yep. from Memphis, and it's an immediate, Absolutely. immediate thing with uh, lots of questions. Whether it's the simple Elvis thing, but often it's more than that. I mean, they kind of get the music, and they get just this whole, and they always want to go there. It's it is real. We're hard on ourselves here, you know, and maybe some ways good reasons, some ways bad reasons. Yeah, I think mo- a lot of bad reasons. Personally, but um, but it's amazing how people recognize the they name do. and what and I, it resonates for them. And I'll agree with that. I'll say that. I'll say that when I've been over there too. Same thing. They're like, "You're from Memphis," and they immediately yeah. start talking about everything that's in Memphis. Yeah. So it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really yeah. is. It's very. It's very cool. And anyway, yeah, it's a very cool. And you, you know, I have friends. I've mentioned this before. My high school buddies who all live up in the northwest where I grew up. Mm-hmm. They come down, you know, every few years, and they just love it. And it's just, you get to see the city through their eyes for a long weekend, yeah. which is super fun. And just the food, the culture. And sometimes we've done the things that you do. You know, we went to we went to Graceland one time. And yeah. we went to um, other kind of t- typical stacks, you know. Or not yeah. stacks. We did go to stacks. And we went to um, uh, Sun Studio. But you sort of feel this culture and you feel the difference yeah. through their eyes. Because they didn't, I've, I didn't grow up here, but I've been here for 28 years right. or something like that. So, um what else? Other stuff that, um, the, the other groups that you're working with. That, do you work with some, do you work in the schools? Is that part so, of the agenda? Well, well the colleges? So I mean, we haven't been working necessarily in the schools, but we definitely want to cultivate a stronger yeah. relationship with Memphis and Shelby County schools. Yeah. We have had conversations with their uh, director of arts and humanities over okay. there, Miss Sonia Porter, who's there. Um, so we want to continue to grow that relationship, obviously, because we want to make sure that arts education is being integrated into school curriculum and in schools. Because you think about it, the arts are transformational. Yeah, um, they can they can do so many things, and we we want to be able to do that. Right, right. That's a big animal, though. Like yep. you know, I mean, you got two hundred schools and one hundred ninety thousand kids it is. and all that. So it is. yeah, I mean. So it'll be a collective of people working, obviously, a non- Shelby County Nonprofit Committee, Memphis Cultural Coalition. It's a collective, yeah. of us, a collective of us that are having those conversations yeah. on how to better engage with schools. And then, and then again, having those conversations with um, the administration on how do we do that. Yeah, right. Um, what about colleges? Are they, it all yet with universities? We're, not really, or we're yeah. not really engaged with colleges. However, I have had some conversations with, um, let's see, the Art Museum at the University of Memphis. I've talked oh, yeah. to some students from there um, that were tasked with saying, how can we bring more uh, attention to 
the, 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 the gallery on campus. And one of the suggestions was that I gave them was, you know, collaborate with some of the other organizations that are not far from you. You got the Dixon, you got Botanic Gardens, right. you got all these things right. over here that are wonderful. Maybe there's some cross programming you do that'll draw people to campus. Um, to go to see these galleries, because from what I understand, they have an amazing African art collection there. Right. It's very right. extensive. Um, but, you know, unless you're on campus, you're not aware. So right. that's one of those. One of, those are some of the conversations, getting out the silo of the college and right. branching out into the community. So we'll see what happens there. But and they're with, gr great folks over there. Yeah. And with the new theater open now, yeah. which is bringing, you know, a destination for yeah. Olympians, not not just the students, maybe there's yeah. some way there that would be cool. Um, the, the other one that's interesting, and you mentioned the Brooks, you know, the, the College of Art and the kind of loss of the College yeah. of Art and the alumni of the College of Art and Brooks is pulling together is all this kind of, they're trying to curate the whole history of art and, and artists and who've been at MCA, who yeah. were at MCA, who yeah. passed through Memphis as part of MCA. That's another one that's just a huge, hugely interesting to me um, kind yeah. of thing that's going on right now. Yeah. Um, with a couple minutes left, what, what have I missed? What else do you, you know, that's a lot. And yeah. I assume it's, you are, you <laughs> are the arts and culture Person. department, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's not a huge staff behind you. Yeah, it's just, right you. now it's just me. It's yeah. just me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. hopefully, you know, as time goes on, we'll be able to grow and add more, yeah. um, you know, uh, in that respect. But yeah, we, we're just moving on with what we're working yeah. on, this Arts for All campaign. The festival that's coming up that takes up is taking up a bulk of my time. I actually have a meeting when we finish here yeah. to talk about that. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, so. Yeah. Just want to continue to push and encourage our residents to have access to and and be a part of our arts community here. Yeah, I want to make a Lee Harris joke, but I don't want to put you in a bad place because he's ultimately your boss, right? Like up yeah. there, because Lee, <laughs> and, and, and I know that Lee listens to this. Mayor Shelby Kenny, Mayor Lee Harris, yeah. does listen to this show from time to time, which was was bizarre. So if he's listening today, I think it's great that he's he's hired you and put you in place. And I just want to put a shout out to you and in, in the arts. Because, you know, Lee's only really wearing a tie and a white shirt and a suit. And he looks very, you know, he doesn't look as artistic as he might. <laughs> he won't like that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, uh, last couple questions here. Um, are, are you from Memphis? Actually? I am born and raised. Okay, you may have said that. I apologize. Yep. Born and raised in Memphis. Born and raised in Memphis. Went away for a little bit, not very long, about eight years and came back in, in 2004. So I've been back here almost 20 yeah. years. Yeah, okay. Um, and you're... Um, First concert. I always try to ask people, what was My, the first concert they went to? Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm going to tell this story. I don't remember it, but apparently they used to have a Memphis Music Heritage Festival here back in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, wow. And it would be on Main Street. And my parents told me to see Muddy Waters. Oh, wow. And apparently I was so excited about it, I was bouncing in my mom's arms. <laughs> and the lady standing next to her said, I'll hold your baby so you can dance. <laughs> because obviously that was exciting yeah. to me. So that's the first concert that's that awesome. I'm aware of that I yeah. was taken to. Yeah. Um, and my... I guess my first concert was New Edition, who's a really cool group, R&B group. Yeah. So I was 11. Yeah. And I remember at the Coliseum. At the Coliseum. Okay. Yep. That's good. Yep. That's good. Yep. I don't think we've had yep. a New Edition. But That's the awesome. earliest would be Muddy Waters. Yeah. At the Memphis yeah. Music Heritage Festival. That's awesome. That's when I was great. an infant. So <laughs> That's good. There you go. That's good. Um, Nakisha Cole is Arts and Culture Liaison for Shelby County Government. Thanks for joining us. You've got your event coming up May 11th. Uh, that's Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Brooks Museum. You yep, said, what, some 40 different arts organizations? 40, 40 different arts organizations, a multitude of performances. It'll be a fun day. It's okay. free to yeah. the public. Great. That's great. Um, and again, if you want to learn more about the work y'all are doing, go to 901artforall.com. But again, that's all that we have, the time we have this week. If you missed any of the show, you can get the full episode on the Daily Memphian site, WYXR, or wherever you get your podcast. A reminder, the sidebar airs on WYXR 91.7 every Thursday at 1130. Please subscribe to this podcast and the other Daily Memphian podcasts. But that's all the time we have this week. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.